Common Bear Podcast, Episode 13. I'm your host, Sarah Yacoub. Today's topic, supporting law enforcement. As a former Los Angeles County Deputy District Attorney, I had the pleasure, the honor, to be trained by and of working with some of the best local, state, and federal law enforcement in the country. I was blessed to work in an office that invested in training, instilled values like wearing the white hat and doing the right thing, and with strong leadership from which to learn. One of my favorite supervisors, a Republican, taught me a lot. Among the many lessons I learned from him was that the district attorney's office has a lot of power over people's lives and that filing a case is a lot more than just having the power to do so. Even where technically we're entitled to do so or to file that case, it's important to not just pull the trigger because we can. We got along well, I suspect that has something to do with the fact that I never brought him a problem without having first thought about it and providing him potential solutions. Listening to Republican politicians in Wisconsin brand themselves as the party of law enforcement irks me on a personal level. Supporting law enforcement or the social capital one gets from waving a flag that suggests they support law enforcement should be rooted in more than lip service. Supporting our men and women in uniform in words, but not by actions, which more than drown out those words, is no support at all. Nevertheless, it seemed to work for Republican politicians. Slogans like back the badge and law and order are the bread and butter of identity politics. They are designed for those among us who want to like the candidate with an R next to their name on the ballot, and likewise want to dislike the Democrat. These slogans are intended for those for whom it is socially more convenient to like Republicans and dislike Democrats. Those of us who fit into this category are not going to ask hard questions, we're not going to dig deeper, and we are certainly not going to point out any hypocrisy. These slogans are great for harnessing partisan political power. What are they not great for? Actually supporting law enforcement. So if you're good with, quote, supporting law enforcement, in name only, like we quote, support veterans, I doubt there's much I can say to inspire you to dig beneath and or abandon the fakeness. I have come to believe that those of us willing to put ourselves and our families through the hell that is running for public office and opening ourselves up to the no shortage of local bullies are either full-blown masochists or just gluttons for punishment. In that spirit, for whatever it's worth, let's talk about why fake support of law enforcement actually hurts law enforcement. For one, not digging deeper, not being willing to examine how people's actions are actually hurting law enforcement means that harm continues. If all we care about, while inconvenient to admit, are the nice words that make us feel good about electing Republican politicians, then at best, law enforcement and their interests come a very distant second. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the offensiveness that is using law enforcement as pawns for political events. On September 5th, 2020, the St. Croix County Republican Party, Shannon Zimmerman and Rob Staffsholt had an indoor super spreader event hosting disgraced extremist David Clark. They packed folks into a restaurant like Sardines and of course, not a mask in sight. They claimed to be raising funds for local law enforcement, but no public mention of money actually raised and or donated. With the cost of getting a celebrity among extremists to St. Croix County and his speaker fees, I'd be willing to bet local law enforcement got nothing. Is that the worst of it? A fundraiser that was unsuccessful at best, bogus to begin with at worst? Unfortunately, no. Despite COVID-19 being the number one killer of law enforcement in 2020, local Republicans recklessly exposed our local men and women in uniform to a virus that is killing them. Seriously, you don't need enemies when your quote supporters are recklessly exposing you to a deadly virus. Another example, the 2019 budget. Despite Governor Evers presenting the product of collaboration from all over the state, a budget that truly put the interests of the people first, Wisconsin Republican politicians scrapped it in its entirety. What did the people's budget contain? For one, the Medicaid expansion, which would have increased access to health care for tens of thousands of Wisconsinites and saved us taxpayers 
$320 million over the following two years. Second, it allocated over $70 million of those savings to mental health resources for school-age youth. Don't let Republican talking points about their budget fool you. What they passed did not begin to cover the bases mentioned. They don't need to. They have voters so conditioned to settle on their bogus false narrative talking points, they don't ever actually have to be true. Unfortunately, while lies protect their political hide in the short term, those lies don't protect those hurt by the reality of the situation. So what does health care have to do with law enforcement? Actually, a lot. The criminal justice system was never designed, equipped, or intended to handle mental health. In communities without adequate access to health care, people are left to worsen in their condition and or self-medicate until things get bad enough for them to cross paths with law enforcement. Law enforcement end up shouldering the stress of handling problems never meant to be allocated to them on their plate. Ever heard of, quote, suicide by cop? It's where someone in crisis provokes law enforcement into shooting and killing them by acting like they're going to shoot and kill the officer. To Wisconsin's Republican politicians who continue to obstruct access, particularly rural access, to mental and addiction health care, stop saying you, quote, back the badge, because let's be real, you don't. It's been, what, eight months into this pandemic? And still nothing. Oh, wait, I stand corrected. Rob Staffschold is very concerned that we get to shoot wolves. Oh, and to be fair, Shannon was really worried about us being able to golf this summer. One last part about the budget. Governor Evers' People's Budget allocated funds to rural communities across the state. Republican politicians from those communities quietly ignored that relief and then, of course, failed to include it in their tax cuts for the wealthiest handful of Wisconsinites' budget. Want to know something ironic? It is the Republican politicians of Wisconsin who are literally defunding the police. The tragedy is that all they have to do is lie about it and, ta-da, we, the voters, fall for it. We talked about what supporting law enforcement is not. Let's finish up with what it is. Supporting law enforcement is giving them the support needed for training and screening for hiring. It is providing resources for the secondary trauma that is a very real and insufficiently accounted for part of the job. It is investing in community programming that allows civilians and law enforcement to build trust. It is institutional support for the good apples who stand and go to bat against the bad apples. It is taking the Medicaid expansion and reducing the load that is mental health crisis placed on the shoulders of law enforcement. It is actually holding those who terrorize the community accountable. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that those literally terrorizing women and children make it home before the officer who arrested them gets home to his own family. Supporting law enforcement means investing in places for people to receive care when under the influence and posing a harm to themselves or others. Supporting law enforcement means not recklessly risking their exposure to COVID. Supporting law enforcement means investing in emergency mental health care right here in our local hospitals. Side note, the $15 million earmarked for roughly 20 beds in an Eau Claire hospital that Republicans kept cramming down our throats is so beyond dishonest. The hospital at issue isn't one that would have been able to continue services without significant government assistance. It was at best a band-aid for a hemorrhage, a band-aid that still required hours of driving and removing those in crisis from any support systems within their own community. One would never know it taking Republican politician talking points at their face value. If I sound angry, it's because I am. I am sick of politicians lying while people and communities continue to get hurt. I'm sick of those lies working to empower the liars while people and communities continue to get hurt. Republicans and the dark money backing them spent in the ballpark of $1 million in our small towns to try to convince people to hate me. Why? Because if successful, perhaps folks will bully me into silence. Or maybe people just won't listen to what I have to say. Guess what, boys? I'm not shutting up, and I'm not going anywhere. $1 million is a lot of money. I'm very flattered. What that tells you is that they know I'm right and are scared that you'll know it too. Episode 14 tomorrow. See you there.